Johnny Infantino is the new president of FIFA. One guy from Switzerland who was a secretary general of a big soccer confederation replacing another guy who was a former secretary general of FIFA itself. Uh, you saw that momentum was building for Johnny Infantino, particularly over the last couple of weeks. What do you think it was that finally put him over the top? I think it was the, the realization from some people that FIFA's image problem translates into less money. I don't think it's a coincidence that we've been made aware of these leaks about uh, the, the $550 million shortfall uh, in, in this cycle for FIFA. And I think there's some people Fewer sponsorships. Who, fewer sponsorships. Uh, the sponsorship slots, some of them haven't been filled for 2018 and 2022. Um, and I think some people kind of realize, like, guys, this is eating into, into our pie. It's not just a question of let's not be corrupt so that we can be because it's the right thing to do, but also, like, this is hurting us. This is hitting us where it hurts. And if you look at the track record of Infantino versus the, the perception, the image of Sheikh Salman, as well as his track record, then I think a lot of people were persuaded. One guy is more of a proven businessman than the other, clearly. There's no question about that. And this is a point that Infantino emphasized afterwards in, in his press conference. He said... You know, when he came out and he said he's going to give $5 million uh, over four years to every single FA, which is considerably more than they receive now from FIFA, people said, well, you're going to bankrupt the organization. And his point was said, no. Well, first of all, we get we have $5 billion, so giving out $1.2 billion every cycle shouldn't be a problem. This is not negotiable. If we have to cut, we're going to cut other things, like some of the lavish spending and the perks. And on top of that, he says... I can go and I can grow the pie. I showed it at UEFA. Uh, we, we increased commercial spending, uh, sorry, commercial sponsorships. We increased uh, broadcast revenues. And we were able to do this because we had the trust of the sponsors and the broadcasters. We need to rebuild that trust with them uh, at FIFA. If we can do that, we'll grow the pie and there will be enough money. And he says his track record proves that. However, it is one thing to make campaign promises, and it wasn't just about the $5 million in every cycle to all 209 federations. It's also about increasing the size of the World Cup, the most successful event of any kind on the planet, from 32 to 40 teams, watering it down. Sheikh Salman said that is pandering. Do you think Johnny Infantino really thinks he is going to be able to follow through on those two key campaign pledges? Well, the World Cup is a decision that ultimately he won't be making on his own. In the end, it's going to be the Congress uh, that, that does it. Um, and I don't think he feels he's going to be judged on whether he can deliver that or not. I think he feels that growing the organization commercially, making sure that people are getting the, the funds that they feel that they need, I think that is what's going to be most important. But you know, one of the keys here, uh, people are, are often skeptical about you know the reform package that was voted in. Johnny Fancino wrote that reform package so he can't come out and say well i don't like this you know he has the obligation to implement it and enforce it and i don't think he's going to have any alibis if he comes up short on that front i mean if you look at it and maybe this is a superficial way to look at it gab but as we've been talking about for the last couple of days you've got sepp blatter a Swiss guy who was a secretary general of FIFA being replaced by Johnny Infantino, a Swiss guy who was the secretary general of UEFA, career bureaucrats up to this point in their careers. They're actually from adjacent towns that you know well. Um, can this really represent a cultural change when you're talking about two guys with such similar backgrounds? Well, it's funny because it even seems some similar when we saw Infantino talk in you know seven different languages. Seth Blatter used to do that all the time. He didn't dance though. He didn't dance. He didn't he dance. Quite, he's not quite as smooth as Infantino. <laughs> no, but look, I think it has to go beyond that. One thing to remember is the president is going to have a lot fewer powers this time around. It's going to be less of a top-down organization. Infantino has pledged that his secretary general, who effectively will be like the CEO. He's going to run the business side of FIFA. He said it's not going to be a European. He needs to do things like that because otherwise, like you said, you know, the difference between them was that, you know, two bald Swiss guys from... I, I didn't say bald. I didn't bring up the point. the hair point, but that is, that is, that is, clearly that is. you're preoccupied by it. <laughs> One of them is more pronounced eyebrows. You know, maybe we could get into to those kinds of differences. Gab Marcotti, thank you very much. Jeremy Schapp in Zurich. We have a new FIFA president. If not, 
necessarily a new culture of FIFA. We do indeed. Thank you, Jen. So let's get some reaction from here in the studio. Jack, does this excite you? Is this a new dawn? Um, I have to say, I, I think the proof will be, will, will be in the eating. You know, we, you have to see exactly what Gianni Infantino brings in terms of reform, in terms of, in terms of changing the culture within FIFA, because I, I, I think that, that, that's the apprehension. I, I th it's a step in the right direction, but we're not quite sure where that direction is. Anyone who's honest Here he is. I was gonna and above <laughs> board is a step in the right direction. You don't know, have to know anything about football. You don't know, have to know anything about business to take this, this organisation a step in the right direction. You just have to be honest to start with. So let's hope that this Mr Infantino is and the people he's going to uh, surround himself with is and are. Uh, and, and that's the most we can hope for. Forget all the reforms and all this. That'll come. That'll come. Please just end all this corruption that was clearly going on under everybody's noses. It was alleged for years and until, you know, in the last, what, six to 12 months, we didn't, we didn't really know about it properly and it all came out and... That's all I hope for. They brought up the, the money situation, a lot of money as well. He's yeah. saying that in total $1.2 billion is going to be given uh, to the FA spread across them all. Mm. Can he deliver that? That just seems they can. extraordinary. As, as, as much as, as UEFA's uh, revenues have grown over the years, so, so has FIFA's. So you have to say under Jerome Valke and Seb Blatter. Um, FIFA have the money. That, that's not a question. Uh, the, the bigger question around FIFA and their finances is where that money goes and, and what's done with it. And as much as, as Infantino sits at the top of FIFA, I think his influence needs to trickle down, not just to the confederations, but to the individual member associations to make sure that they are spending the money where they say they are and that there's, there's full and transparent accountability around that spending. Otherwise, we, we, we've not moved in any direction at all. I, I think we can all agree that it's great the last regime's gone. The problem is, Infantino has just been put in by probably the majority of the same people that put the last regime in. So he's got a lot of work to do. And again, in the political arena, this time it's football, the guys in the running are always saying they're going to do this, they're going to do that. And there's always, there's always at least one of those main things that never happens. What one's it going to be with this guy? I guess and, we'll find and, out. And wait, 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 talk about FIFA reforms. So Infantino was part of the board, wasn't he, that drew up these reforms. So you imagine it should be plain sailing. Well, it, it, it should be. But again, you know, having it on paper and, and having it implemented at the member association level is two completely different things. You are talking about 209 members, some of them fairly remote, some of them difficult to get to. How much oversight is there going to be? And, and that's the... That's the overriding challenge. What you don't want is a situation to reoccur like you had under Seb Blatter saying, well, I can't, be, I can't account for everybody. I can't keep an eye on everybody and, and what everybody's doing. That is job number one for, for Gianni Infantino. What makes his, his job very hard, and, and certainly I think Kamush is, 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 the, is, the right, is the right president to have, is you now have a president who's pledging reforms, pledging transparency, but the Two of the next two showpiece events for FIFA, the 2018 World Cup and 2022, are steeped in controversy. Uh, are they going to be there, Shaq? Uh, uh, is I, there I, any way that... Can he just say, for example, do you know what? We shouldn't have it in Russia. He, he can. we shouldn't have it in Qatar. Yeah, let's yeah, move it. Let's, yeah, let's yeah, sort Yes, absolutely he can. But FIFA will then face lawsuits that, I, that they simply uh, cannot mount a, a credible challenge to and it will end up being far more expensive um, than anything never mind the five billion in revenues you strip those two you strip those two countries of, of, of their world cups the lawsuits that will follow I, I, I think you know FIFA won't be able to cope Did you see who was one of the first organizations to follow Mr Infantino yeah. on, on Twitter did you know that shot yes was the uh, allegedly was the uh, Qatari FA ah uh, and, and also the amount of people that were crawling around this uh, new FIFA president, once he was elected and that had been announced and all these people could then say, oh, <laughs> I, I didn't vote for you, but you know, we can make this work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, we, well, can make, we can be friends. But the thing is as well, we don't know who voted for who, because once again, you yeah, use the word transparency, it was all a, a secret ballot. It, it, it is, and, and that's something I, I, I don't agree with. I, I feel that there should be some accountability, if not, if not just to... The president. He knows don't who voted think, yeah. from. Don't, don't you, no, Jack, no, you, have, you have an idea. Got, you you have an idea but it's Pe supposed to be a secret. People my, talk. My, no, my point is this. My point. My secret, point. The old wink. I always, use, I, I always use Trent Bigo as an example. Trent Bigo's FA's president, David John Williams, 
has a mandate from the TTFA board as to who to vote for. Now, nobody knows who he, who he actually voted for. He could have a private deal cut with somebody else and going against what his own board is advising. And I think that's where, that's, that's how minute the transparency has, has to boil down to. You have to be able to account for your own. Otherwise, it just opens up the possibility of personal deals. And that is what brought FIFA to this position. So no Galati, personal deals. So no Galati came out before and said the US Soccer Federation are voting for Mr. Infantino. They voted for Prince Ali in the first oh, round, sorry, Infantino Ali, in the yeah. second. Scottish FA came out and said we're voting for Mr. Infantino. So, listen. These people know who's voting for them and who's voting against them. Are you going to be calling him Mr. Infantino throughout yeah, his whole... Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to work yeah. out if I can mess his name up the same as... <laughs> Giano, you're going to call him Giano. Give me yeah, Giano. Giano Infantino. I'm just no, glad that's one of your, that's one of your moves. Sepp Sep Blatter was very much demonised. He was the reason that FIFA was corrupt. He was kind of the, the villain amongst all of this, which everyone kind of needs when we're talking about this sort of story. Is the fact that he's not there yet as... Stevie said it's the same organisation with the majority of the same people, with the same problems, that everyone gets the same amount of votes. It doesn't matter if you're a 5,000 population country or a 50 million. Is anything going to change, really? Well, th that's with this and, new and in fairness to Seb Blatter, FIFA's problems, FIFA's corruption problems preceded Seb Blatter. It's been a long time in the making to, to get FIFA as corrupt as it has been. Yes, Seb Blatter has been painted as, as the villain, rightly so, given that he's been the president o over the last 18 years. So it's not just a matter of changing, changing the face. That's easily done. Mm. It's a matter of changing 42 years of corruption leading up to this now. The, it, it will be a process. It's not going to happen overnight. But I remain hopeful that you have the president to at least see that change started. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.